You're listening to REI USA Podcast, your prime resource for genuine real estate growth. If you want to jumpstart your real estate career, whether in active or passive investing, this is the right show for you. Join professional home renovator Stacey Rossetti as she talks to REI USA teachers and expert investors willing to share their tips and tricks to get started in investing, sharing actionable advice in every area of real estate, all while putting legality, habitability, and safety above everything else. Combine their unparalleled advice with your strong drive for success, and that incredible real estate fortune will be yours. Now, here's your host, Stacy. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Hope everyone's doing great. Thank you for being here. And I am Karen Anderson. I'm with Lissa Marketing. I am a direct marketing coach. I've been doing this for 20 years. I love what I do, helping people to find off-market deals or getting the foundation so they can find off-market deals. And I've had just a pleasure of working with Stacey and her team for, for quite some time. And a little background about me. Um, so I'm based out of Houston, Texas, uh, List in Marketing. And my background is in marketing and statistics. I worked with IBM before getting into um, direct marketing. Um, loved it. Uh, love everything data. <laughs> and just um, my parents are real estate investors. That was really the catalyst of why I do what I do. And I just wanted to help to figure out different platforms where I could really help with different marketing and lists that would generate, you know, a better target audience and um, get more motivated sellers, right? So that's what I do. And before I get into direct mail and, you know, mailing for dollars and the right list and um, multiple lists, I just wanted everyone to just take just one minute and just close your eyes. <laughs> And just really think, why am I a real estate investor? And just ask yourself the question, like, what got me to being a real estate investor? And everyone's going to have different answers, but it's important to ask the whys. So, you know, like Stacey had mentioned earlier in her presentation, um, the flexibility of, you know, being your own boss. And uh, my parents, they got into it because they wanted to make sure that they had additional income, right? When they retired and they have multiple properties that they've um, bought and held over the years and just, you know, they're doing well and they can travel and they can do what they want. Um, and, you know, I saw that building a nest egg for, for your children, having that financial freedom, right? And doing it the way Stacy does. <laughs> uh, that's a dream, you know, to go ahead and be able to travel and be in that RV. And, um, and at the same time, you know, she's able to go around and and help others and teach and, and then build her wealth. And, you know, that's, it's why, what brought you here. And to be a success in this industry, it's really connecting with the right people. And I love, you know, earlier in her presentation, talking about this educational you know, forum and just really connecting with some great, you know, teachers and that just assist you, especially starting out. I have been doing this for quite a long time to where even now I educate, hey, you really need to surround yourself with the right people to have that level of success. So key ingredients, again, the right education and coaching. You have, like Stacy said, this is like small coaching sessions that you get through REI USA. Um, I know that Stacy has a coaching program for storage that's phenomenal the right network of REI people, again, through REI USA, as well as, you know, other RIA groups, but really here, I mean, it's like a one stop to get all of this education and connections and get going. And then even if you're seasoned, I mean, to, to further your knowledge and learn as the market shifts, you know, like myself sharing today with, with marketing, you know, what is trending, what is doing better and building from that. Uh, the right systems in place. Stacy is hands down knows, you know, you really, this is a business, right? So you have to have your back end in place, your tracking in place, um, your CRM, you know, everything you need to build your business, um, getting with lenders, um, having your private money or, or, you know, all of that is so necessary and the right marketing. So it really is crucial. Over the years, I've had people that have come to me and, you know, a lot of times, 
they, they don't know where to start. So that's where I come in. Um, or even with seasoned, you know, investors, we just, we discuss the strategies that are best for them. And, you know, we figure out, we brainstorm, like what's going to help them. What are, what are their goals? What, what are their niches? You know, what, what, what are they thinking to do in the next six months, year? Um, and, and things change, right? So I have clients that come to me, um, you know, this year that came to me totally different about what they wanted to do last year, because they see that they want to have more passive income or they want to do more flipping. You know, so everything as the market shifts, your, your thought on what direction I'm going to go in might shift as well. Everyone's different right? You just have to figure out your own unique game plan and the right mailing lists. So the right mailing lists are crucial. When I, when I got into the industry many years ago, I worked for five years to really enrich myself in the data world, understand sourcing, understand how to get the best out of different files. And it's so imperative to have that strong foundation when you're mailing because you want the right audience or else you're spending a lot of money mailing out, you know, postcards or letters. And if you don't get it back, well, obviously you just kind of threw a lot of marketing dollars away and you have to test. I mean, it's not like it's going to happen. Yes, it can right off the bat, but more often than not, you really want to have that six months to nine months to prepare in terms of your marketing. Um, and I, you know, even with seasoned investors, I'm like, look, let's just see how it goes. And if we have to tweak it, we'll tweak it. Let's talk next quarter. So I'm always available. I set up, you know, different event meetings. And I typically, when you start with me, I want to get back with you within three to six months. So why mailing for dollars? 70% of people in the U.S. say that mail is more personal than the internet. And, you know, I mean, I get that. <laughs> Technology can be a little impersonal. But you know that's a strong figure, and that does include your millennials as well. In fact, um, what did I see here? Not too long, yeah. About 29% of millennials actually liked to get a direct mail, you know, piece, which I found interesting over emails. So you know, it's it's still that it's still a group that can be approached with mail. Now you could do additional things. You could also send you know a mail piece that has a text option or reverse text. That is a great you know additional tool to utilize. Um, or you could do calls as well and append it to a strong list foundation, which a lot of my clients are you know doing as well. Ninety um, percent other stats. Ninety percent of direct mail is viewed to twenty percent of emails, and that is a huge deal. I have had over the years a lot of people that have come to me for emails. It's great when they're homegrown. Really, that's when you get the better responses. Right? Is when you have had people that have gone to your landing page. Maybe they were looking on your website, and you've captured that email. And, or people that came to, you know, your site and, you know, you still, again, you have your email and then those people or at trade shows or whatever it is, however you've connected and you've gotten that opt in email and it's homegrown. Those are the emails that you want to keep sending out. Um, you can get emails appended to lists and they are done more so nowadays. Uh, but again, direct mail calling, texting is going to have the greater response. 50% um, of people find postcards useful. In other words, you know, so people, you know, a lot of people think, oh, everybody's going to trash it in the mail. Well, 50% don't, right? They put it away, they save it for later. Um, I do that. And there's a multitude of different types of mail pieces as well. Um, I'll get into that a little later, but 42% of people read or scan the mail they receive. Again, you know, saving it for later, which again, I do it <laughs> um, just in case. I've got actually roofers just came by because we had a hailstorm and, you know, I saved a few of their contact information to have it just in case I need it. Um, and I did call one. <laughs> um, but, you know, those are the things that direct mail. People are into direct mail. In fact, a local direct mailer that I have um, worked with for many years, you know, was telling me it's just, it's on the rise, right? People are doing more businesses are doing more direct mail. 
nowadays than even than they did like five years ago. So I think people are realizing, you know, yes, technology is there, but that personal touch is still so vital for all businesses, um, particularly in the REI world. I mean, I have talked to from newbies to very seasoned longtime clients, and they still are getting, you know, great responses with um, direct mail. <laughs> and okay, ROI, cost per lead. So you always want to look at your cost per lead, right? And what Stacy was talking about too with different markets is so important to you know know your market and look at you know your budget. So if you're in a city, it might be you know harder to get deals and to know should I use the postcard or letter? Like if you were in Dallas, you know you might not want to send a really you know cheap postcard. Whereas if you were in Louisiana, um, you could do a smaller postcard and send that out, but, and have different verbiage um, for different types of um, people with different areas. So, you know, city versus country, it's a different market and the cost per lead is going to be different. So in LA, you know, if you send out some pieces, you want to send out a lot more in LA than you would in say, well, Idaho is getting better. Like Stacey said, (laughs) I try to think like, um, you know, rural areas, even in Georgia, even though Georgia has gotten very competitive, competitive, Tennessee, you know, it's just California is going to require more. Florida is going to require more. And your cost per lead, though, is still what you want to look at. So you might spend, you know, 10000 in marketing. But if you get a deal, it could be a thirty, forty, dollars you know, thousand dollar wholesale deal or even much more than that. I've heard people, you know, 70, 80000 Whereas, you know, in general, though, we say 3000 in marketing. If you get a wholesale deal and it's 10K, um, you know, you've made three times the money. Uh, If you get 15, it's five times. So obviously there's good return on investment from doing direct mail marketing um, for investors. And let's see. Okay, so to make the money in mailing, you have to have the right mailing lists. Proven algorithms. So I do a lot of work with distressed homeowner models, um, different types. And that's what's important is the sourcing methods for each type. So nowadays you can go online and you can find a lot of different list companies that are available out there. Um, So what you want to look for though, is not necessarily it's the biggest one and let's, you know, go ahead and try out, let's say distressed homeowners with absentees mixed with tax delinquents and just stack it in one main database. You really want to have different sources for different lists. So our tax delinquency file is separate from our absentee file is sourced separate than our, you know, distressed delinquent file. They're all sourced a little differently and then they're overlaid because you want the foundation of pulling the main component of that data first and foremost, so sourced, excuse me, the best way possible. Then you can add the layers. You don't want to go to one main database like a 300 million names and then try to figure out all the components in it. It's not effective. And I did that, you know, when I started out, I didn't quite understand um, the whole data world, um, but it was also pushed from larger list companies, you know, oh, just use this type of data file and you can still pull it and you can pull it for cheaper. But the problem is, is everyone's doing that. You don't want to have just the same data as everyone's doing. You want something that's going to be different. That's going to set you apart. Like Stacy, I'm all about having my clients have an edge, have more education, have more information, the ability to really just get a step ahead of the rest that are out there since it is so competitive. And so I'm, I'm good about sourcing methods, um, overlaying data and algorithms is discussed, uh, audience that's important. So I look at like what Stacy mentioned earlier, it is vital to know what, you know, what is going on now, what, what is performing best in terms of um, different demographics. So the larger, excuse me, the older population is not moving as much. So that's correct. Um, You know, they're staying put, there's not, you know, they're not really selling the home. So 75 and older, no. And millennials, obviously they are growing. Um, It is amazing. I think it went from like, 30% of people owning homes to like 60%. Everybody's like running, you know, to get homes in that demographic group. They're just purchasing homes. And I'm, it's, it's astounding. It's wonderful. And I'm I'm 
glad to see that. So we need to know with our audience, you know, that, that poll of, you know, from, you know, the 20s into the 50s, 60s. And I do make sure that depending on the market, so I always tell people, you know, look, your list model has potentially changed from the last couple of years till now. So you want to look at having me create a different foundation, which takes all of those components together. And, you know, each market's going to be a little different as well. I will go through and make sure that the models are fit with the market that you're in and data hygiene process. That is super key too. Um, there's a lot of data companies that don't clean it necessarily to make it the best in terms of not having you know anything come back in the mail. Deliverability is very, very important and accuracy on files. So I'm adamant about making sure our files are current um, and again, sourced well with the right overlay. Failing list types. So in, in this market, and I agree with Stacey, um, with regards to just there's so many investors that have kind of gone back to corporate world and said, you know, I'm just going to leave it for a bit and unfortunately have departed when it's actually a good time to invest. I know that the people that have been around forever are like, oh, this is great. You know, now people that really aren't serious about it or don't quite have all the education. Um, necessary to get to understand that you know this every time is the right time for investing i mean it's you know my parents have never stopped investing over the years they are always investing so yes you want to figure you obviously don't want to go into declining market so you just figure out your path mailing list types so the hardship distress late model that is people that uh, an algorithm that has people that are going to be late on their mortgages is doing exceptionally well right now um, we have an absentee file that's not just your frame clear and high equities, but it's also has some components of inherited and family transfers. So that one's doing well. Um, still, it depends on the place, right? Not, not in California, but um, again, you know, as people come to me for different data, I will have that conversation and we'll figure out what would be best um, depending on where you are and again your direct marketing goal. Uh, tax delinquencies that has been coming up a lot more as of late. Um, there's this just a huge movement into tax delinquencies and um, just a lot of profit to be made there too. So that's another file to work with storage Stacy's in storage storage data is working great we have a couple different models and I go over the advantages and disadvantages of both I prefer people to start out with a few lists which I'll be getting into in the next couple sessions here but I did want to point out with storage data that you know it's still you're doing your direct mail and you have the option in there as well for the business file of storage data uh, where you have phone numbers so, um, but it's been great. Uh, multi investor models. So you can pull uh, multiple investor types. This is working well for short term rentals. There's private money models, private mortgagee note holders, prettier home models. A lot of times people want to get, you know, target people that are not in such a distressed home, but a nice home. So we have a model that's fit for that. And then, um, certain parameters that again, it, it still has some duress on there so that you can approach somebody that, um, you know, is off market and, but potentially would be uh, a good seller. And let's see, commercial and land data. And that um, file would be like for multifamily dwelling units. So you could do anything from apartments uh, to two to four units or five plus units. Um, and then you can hit retail, you can do warehouses. You know, so you you have the options for different mailing lists. And my my deal is making sure that the foundations are the best for my clients. So I do a lot of extra work and data hygiene on all the file types. And this is not all of them, but you know, um, some of the most asked for or sought after as of right now. <laughs> so right mailing lists lead you the right way. You got to make sure your target audience is is reached. Um, that is so key. I've Again, having done this for a long time, it's important for me 
to make sure that my clients are working with the right sources. And, um, you know, they've come to me and said, Hey, you know, so-and-so can get X, Y, Z. And I'm like, I understand, but it's not quite done. Like I'm doing it to weed out the non-essential criteria that's through there. So, um, you know, that is very important when it comes to mailing lists to make sure that we have it with the best data hygiene process possible. This strategy is picking the right list. That's where I come into play. Uh, direct marketing consultants are very important to have and just to you know walk you through it. Um, and again, to get back in touch and tweak it as needed. And I do spend a lot of time working on that and, and I'm very competitive for my clients. <laughs> uh, so I want um, them to come back and, you know, it, just be with me for a long time. I have clients that I'm grateful for, and now they have their kids that are, you know, coming to me. Um, and I'm you know, just, I want to see people succeed in this area and I will do my best to make it happen. <laughs> and the right list comes from the right source. As I mentioned, um, I, I have this key point here of Walmart of data. So what's happening, unfortunately, is, and I saw this 20 years ago, where you just have these huge list companies and they're out there and they are reselling data and then they're white labeling it and somebody's coming through and they're list brokering out and they're doing like a what I call a more of a garbaging out the list. They're reselling it so many times under so many different hats saying, oh, it's getting out there to where unfortunately it becomes so saturated. So, you know, the sourcing method of it too is and why I mentioned Walmart is, you know, you don't go to Walmart to buy a diamond ring. Although I said that to my mom and she's like, sure you can, but it's just not going to be the best. I'm like, exactly. <laughs> so it's important to know, you know, you can go to the Walmart of data. Like you can go to the online companies and, you know, I, I actually encourage having, you know, different methods of getting the leads and the deals. Right. Um, it's just do it more so for like a maybe a consumer radius or if you want to saturate certain areas, if you wanted to do something like that, sure. Or get with somebody like myself that really understands the targeting and the sourcing um, and how important that is. And not just the piece. It has to be, you know, the piece is important too. And that's about testing. Um, but having that creative data mining, that's what I make sure is done. And then the right list. And I say plural, so that gets us into our next topic. The right lists is always key because I want to make sure that people start out with two or more. Making sure that you have, you know, multiple lists is imperative. So testing it out, you want to test all the, the different files. And I usually do about, I believe this is on the next slide, but I usually do about two to five different list types. And then we'll test through that. Uh, again, it depends on what you're doing. Obviously, there are some um, that have a niche. And if it's just uh, for multifamilies, maybe we just do two models. But if some people want to get into wholesaling and flipping, and they want to hit distressed residential homeowners, then we have, you know, three, four, five models. But it all, again, depends on your budget, depends on your, um, what kind of strategy. So that's something to have a discussion about. Getting into new markets too, uh, you will want to have, again, if you traditionally, let's say you're working with me and we did two lists in one area, we might just bump that up if you're getting into another market. Uh, and you, you know, there's so many uh, opportunities, like Stacy said, that's really out there right now, getting into different markets. I have a lot of clients that are now doing things virtually more so, and they're going into different states and they have boots in the ground on, you know, in other areas and they're, they're making a lot of deals out there. Uh, yes. Face-to-face -face is still, you know, I think imperative. Uh, everyone has a different thought about that, but you know, you, you can make additional deals. Um, and there's, you know, areas like um, in Georgia, right? You can get into five states with five to eight hour drives, I think, something like that. But I have a lot of clients doing that and they're getting um, deals, whether it's residential or storage. So again, two to five direct uh, marketing lists uh, would be good to start with having multiple foundations because you're going to test it, right? So wait, if one area 
you see that an absentee duress file is performing well. Maybe in another area, you have the tax delinquencies that's pulling better. And so you won't know that until you really you know, start working on your data. And you know, you're throwing a net of three different list types. And then you can see, oh, you know what, Karen, you can call me back and say, hey, let's, you know, let's look at really modifying it a little bit. Or actually, we've got a lot more millennials here. So we'll go back and we'll work on the data and you know, change up the demographic profile and the models for you. And then you can go out again. And that's what I love to do is just figure out, you know, strategy. And then what happens though is sometimes the market will shift and then we have to look at a whole new list foundation that happens, you know, it's just, um, you want to, and, and some people don't, some people stay with what they've been doing. Like I have a client who she has not changed her marketing in 15 years and she does phenomenally well. So, you know, whatever works for you. And she does distress. So she's doing more of the hardship distress file. That is one file type that has really just been phenomenal long time. So, you know, we can have that discussion and see what works best for you. Results improve considerably when there is enough of a sampling size coupled with multiple list marketing and different geographical areas. It is what it is. <laughs> Something that I've seen over the years with clients and, you know, you really need to have, when we started looking at smaller samples, you could just see a dip in the marketing. So you need that two, 3000 names per file type if possible. Um, you know, and I will work if we need to, you know, have 1500, but I'll walk you through that process. But sampling sizes is imperative as well. So mailing ABCs, always being consistent. Consistency is the key to success in direct mail marketing. Uh, you need to continuously be marketing. So many investors give up before the money comes in. You have to send out, again, enough volume, enough times two different groups you're testing you always have to be testing it out and then once you find that motion that everything is working well then you can modify it um, i've had a client just recently that had four lists and now he has three two of the four lists performed really well so we kept those two lists and then we added one for this year and so he's going out and he's marketing to that so you know, we're always changing it up. I'm here to guide. Uh, I want people to do really well. So it's imperative to build trust with a distressed homeowner. You have to send out multiple times because it's also, I mean, in addition to that, you have your branding, um, but even more so, it's just, you know, that person, there might not be ready then. So if you're there and if you're sending it out and not just the one and done, you will potentially be there when they are ready. Mailing multiple times does offer higher success rates. No question, I've talked to many investors over the years and as it's gotten more competitive, um, most encourage at least you know, two to three touches and then you know, even more so. So it just obviously depends on budget too, but we would walk through that together or a list agent should be able to do that for you. So ABC yields profit to those with patience. Be consistent with mailing as well as your follow-ups. Follow-ups. Okay, follow-ups is so key. I'll, I'll get into that. But 80% of deals come after multiple touches. So you have your calls and texts and emails long after that first contact. But after that, I mean, a lot of people... We'll think, oh, okay, you know, I got, yes, if you send out a mail piece, it's very possible that let's say you send out 5,000 pieces that you do pretty well and you get, you know, a half to 1%. In some areas, you can get a bit more. Um, I'm just being conservative in the numbers. But after that, you do want to have a system in place to do your follow ups. There are, there's so much opportunity after that that sometimes, unfortunately, you know, it's just people go with what's happening now and they're getting, you know, people that are calling in, but you have to have a system in place to also do the follow-ups to direct mail. And it's just imperative. People give up too early. 
They just, you know, they'll send out maybe a couple of times and then they're like, oh, it doesn't work. You got to keep working it. Maybe it means, you know, and depending on your budget, maybe you scale down a little bit, but just keep marketing it. I mean, even if you just do some drip marketing, they aren't angry at you. People forget that their (laughs) target group is distressed homeowners. So many of my clients over the years have been marketing to distressed homeowners, some of the most distressed ones, which are more of the delinquent type files. And the ones that over time have really done the best are the ones that go through and they're just listening. It's just listen to, you know, oh, I don't want this. You know, I, I don't need this. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, you know, I'm marketing in your area and just wanted to help people and see if they needed any assistance with their home. So, you know, I wasn't targeting you, right? You're just, you know, you were looking at being of service to somebody in the area. So by, you know, just listening and just letting them know, like, hey, I understand you're not busy, you know, you're not in need of my services right now. Just keep my information. That's something to still follow up on. Even if they call you angry, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you know, um, that's it. It was just, it's not a good lead. I can't say how many of the top coaches that I've worked with over the years have told me that some of their most angriest callbacks have, you know, turned into great deals. So don't just, you know, think, oh, it's nothing can happen from it. That's actually a good opportunity. It's just people have a hard time when they're, you know, they had a loss and they could have, you know, just lost their home or they're, they're freaking out because they're losing their home. Um, so you just got to listen and wait and, and know that it's still something that you can help them with. Most successful REI are always marketing. There are no breaks. I hear that all the time. <laughs> and, you know, I see it all the time. It's just constantly marketing. And, you know, I do have a lot of clients that uh, started out um, like Stacey, you know, just really more so with direct mail, direct mail. And now they've moved into the online space, but online. So you can't make as much money, well, online as you would in direct mail. So let me, let me say when you're starting out, direct mail just doesn't cost as much to kind of tweak and figure out as if you go into online. It's a little, it's just more competitive. So it's going to require a lot more money. And I hear that from many investors. So direct mail, you can definitely create, you know, a method of getting to that point. And then eventually you can obviously grow into different channels, which I do encourage. I want people to diversify, right? And while I'm one list source, there are other list sources. And I have this discussion, you know, that you would want to tap into, um, even through Stacy's, um, you know, the probates, uh, you know, that's another company. I know that she works with closely that, you know, you can get probate lists from there because it's a well-sourced file. And so you look at just different ways of getting your, your marketing together, but don't stop. (laughs) So I wanted to go over closing points and I'm not sure if this in this, this form or not, Stacey, I didn't even ask you (laughs) if there's Q and a session or, or not, but I wanted to go over essentials with um, mailing. So you want to have the right lists. You want to get multiple lists and touches and uh, geography testing. And again, consistency. And so mail pieces, they must be deliverable, must grab your attention, have to have a call to action you know, I got this. So now what do I do? What's, you know, what's, what's the reason for me to call? Um, A lot of times PS within um, a mail piece is great. You know, um, call us and we can talk to you about your, your home values or something. You know, you just want to give them that little nudge of like some way to get them to call in so that you have that lead and you can have the discussion and you must provide a solution to their problem, obviously. Follow-ups and nurturing leads is an integral part of the direct mail process. I can't say that enough. Follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. Don't think that just because, I mean, I can remember back, even with Stacy, like she told me down the line, distressed mail marketing, you know, just months and months later, like later in the year, she would still be getting, you know, people that would call in. So you do have opportunity there. 
for the long term. And nurture with calls, emails, and texts. Um, this might be something that I get into later, but we can uh, in another event. <laughs> but um, calling emails and texts. I think are still imperative, um, but everyone's different. It depends on where you are. And it's not necessarily something you need to do right away with direct mail, but you can get to that point. Consult a list specialist and direct marketing expert to lead the way. So that's what I love to do. I love helping people. I love how they grow and um, just you know make money and help others at the same time. So it's just win-win. And you don't give up. <laughs> I know a lot of people do. And I'm just like, well, let's try something else. And I know sometimes with budget, it's hard, but marketing is so important. So, you know, just go back on the marketing dollars a little bit, but don't just stop. It's just, you're almost there. And I've seen that so many times. It's like, oh, stay a little longer. And, and then I don't hear from them. And it's a little heartbreaking because I know just a little bit more, just a little more tweaking, but it happens. It's just, I want people here. You've got this amazing group at REI USA and connections and people can do it and you can excel. I've seen so many wonderful people over the years, just make, you know, that just get into financial freedom and it's pretty amazing. So mailing for dollars has made many of my clients very wealthy um, and it can be done. So in closing, your success is our success. I really want everyone Every single person. I know it's not 100% possible, but I do want everybody to succeed. So I do everything I can to get you the right foundation. Um, we form solid customer, or excuse me, customer relations, and work smart to offer our clients a competitive edge. And you know, I, I'm working with you. I'm working for you. I do also have 500 names I want to add. So, you know, for, for free on the files that you select, whether it's a storage, whether it's distressed, whether it's an absentee duress, et cetera. And I do offer times, usually about 30, 40 minutes, and we connect, we go over, you know, your goals. I send over an Excel spreadsheet that asks a lot of questions. And then we look at a time where we can take the time. Um, oftentimes I'll do a Zoom call as well. And we just spend the time discussing your strategies that are available to you and, and, and figure out a game plan. And the code is there. So it's REI FEB 2022. Well, I almost said 20. <laughs> 2022. Proud sponsor of REI USA. Please contact me. There's my information. Uh, you could send an email. That would be great. So um, in that way, I can email you back. And yes. Thank you for listening to this episode of REI USA. Let these golden pieces of advice clear your path towards thriving real estate success and start making those amazing financial opportunities work for you. If you liked this episode and want to get more of these valuable secrets, be sure to subscribe to the show at www.rei-usa.com. Leave a rating too and share with your friends. Until next time.